Thanks very much, Colin, and good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for, for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I'd certainly question that last comment as to whether this is the best um, piece of work, but I suppose what, what I tried to do is um, take the patchwork of data that is out there in relation to various bits of this question and try to put them together uh, into something that comes across as, uh, as at least a starting point for the magnitude of what we're talking about here today. Um, so most of my slides, and I'll be pretty quick, but most of my slides are numbers and data. Um, so I don't profess for a second to have the insights or to know very much at all about the experience that many of the people in the room have gone through. So please bear with me that I am presenting it from a, a hard numbers perspective. So we don't need to go through this slide. Uh, everybody here knows more about this uh, than I do, certainly. Um, but essentially, I, I was brought in and, and asked if I could answer a number of basic questions. So the first of those is, how many women with epilepsy in Ireland gave birth over the 40 years from 1975 uh, up to 2015? And then of those with epilepsy who gave birth, how many of them are likely to have taken Valparate while they were pregnant? And then how many women are likely to have taken Valparate while pregnant for conditions other than epilepsy? And then I suppose the key question was, arising out of all of that, could we make some estimation of uh, the number of children um, that were exposed to Valparate and that are experiencing uh, some form of um, either neuro neurodevelopmental disorder or congenital malformation as a result of that? So just quickly to run through the answers to each of those questions in as, in as much as, as I was able to answer them. Um, the number of women with epilepsy who gave birth in Ireland. So we know that the, the generally accepted figure internationally is that one in 200 pregnancies is in a woman with epilepsy. Um, we know from central statistics data in Ireland that from 1975 to 2015, there was over two and a half million pregnancies in Ireland. So just very roughly based on that, if we take it that five in a thousand or one in 200 of those was a woman with epilepsy, we can roughly estimate that about 12 and a half thousand pregnancies uh, occurred over that time period in women with epilepsy. Uh, and these are, it, it's a small caveat, it's, it's women, uh, it's pregnancies that resulted in a live birth. Um, I said that it's generally accepted that it's one in 200. Some studies say it's more than that, some studies say it's less than that. So we also looked at the extremes. So in all likelihood, it's about 12 and a half thousand pregnancies, but it could be anywhere from 8,000 up to 20,000. So the second question then was, of those 12 and a half thousand pregnancies, how many of those women had taken Valparate while they were pregnant? So there's very little data, honestly, on this question, either internationally and certainly in Ireland, there's also very little data. But what we did know about Ireland was that from, from the Irish part of the register um, that, that was in existence from 2001 up to 2015, 17% of the women who had registered on that had been prescribed Valparate whilst they were pregnant. Now that changed dramatically over time. So in 2002, one in three women um, who were on that register had taken Valparate while pregnant. But in more recent years, that's down to less than 5%. Um, we had no data at all on what happened before 2001, so we had to make some assumptions. And essentially what we said uh, was that there would have been a ramp-up period in the early years in the 1970s when it started to be prescribed, um, but then we assumed that the highest point which was, that we had data for, which was 2002, um, would be representative of, generally representative of the situation that would have pertained in the late 1970s through the 1980s and the 1990s. So in other words, we assume that one in three women with epilepsy who fell pregnant in the late 70s, 80s and 90s were prescribed Valproate. Uh, so on that basis, we've estimated that over the 40 years, um, there were just over 3,000 pregnancies that were exposed to Valproate, um, with 3,100 babies exposed to Valproate as a con consequence of that. So the third question, so that was, that was women who took Valparate because of epilepsy. So the next question was, was there other women um, who had taken Valparate for, for reasons that, that other, other than epilepsy? 
And whilst we have little data in relation to epilepsy, we have no data at all in relation to other conditions. But based on, on a, UK, a big UK study of 500,000 women, um, the pre pregnant women, um, that study showed that about 11% 11, 11 of all women who were on Valparate while pregnant were on Valparate for reasons other than epilepsy. So based on that, we said, right, we will assume that the figures that we have for, for epilepsy represent 89% um, of, of all women and all children. Um, and we, we only did that from 2008 onwards because that's when um, Valparate was licensed for use for bipolar disorder. So we had to assume that from 1975 to 2008, uh, our figures are purely for epilepsy, and from 2008 onwards, it was for epilepsy and bipolar or other conditions. But we have very little data information on those other conditions. Um, so including those other reasons, and we are talking about a very small time frame in the context of the overall thing. Uh, we estimated that there was an additional 26 children exposed um, as a result of those other conditions. So in total then, over the, over the 40 years, we'd estimate that there was almost 3,100 pregnancies uh, and all, just over 3,100 uh, children exposed. So then I suppose the key question is, as a result of that exposure, uh, how many women, are, sorry, how many children are likely to have experienced a malformation or a neurodevelopmental neuro delay or disorder as a result? And just like everything else, I'm sorry, I know it's a common theme, but the data, the, the information that I could use was weak. But we know from the register in Ireland uh, that about 5% of children who are exposed in utero will have a congenital malformation. And we, we know from a much bigger Cochrane review, which looked at data from all over the world, that about one in 10, just over one in 10 children, uh, will, will experience a congenital malformation. So based, again, we took those as the, the extremes. Um, and so we said of the 3,100 children, uh, we've estimated that somewhere between 150 and 340 uh, over the 40 years have experienced a malformation. And then secondly, there's, the, there's again, very little data uh, in relation to neurodevelopmental disorders or delay, um, but reports do claim that up to 40% of children can experience some form uh, of dis disorder or delay. So on that basis, again, um, it's possible that up to 1,250 children have experienced some form of disorder or delay as a result of, of this issue. Um, So that's just a summary of what I've said so far. One, one of the questions that was posed to me uh, as I came to the end of the work, well, okay, that's, that's 40 years of data, but how many children are currently living in Ireland with uh, these issues? Um, so what I did is I looked at the 16 year period from 2000 to 2015, uh, and we came up with some figures that I'll talk about in a second. And the figures essentially, they won't have changed that much from the years from 2003 to today. So essentially, what we're saying is that if you look at the, if you're looking at the, the, bot the bottom boxes there, it's reasonable to assume that there's somewhere between 43 and 95 children, aged 0 to 16, living in the country today with a, with a major congenital malformation as a result of valproate, and there's, a, there's probably about 350 children, aged 0 to 16, living in the country with some form of neurodevelopmental disorder or delay as a result of exposure. So I understand, if there's one thing I do understand in all of this, it's, it's the power of data. And for me, data drives everything and can be used to drive messages. But I'd just be very keen that the data, whilst it can be used as a starting point, and please do use it as a starting point, um, it, it has so many limitations that we cannot be sure about any of this. Uh, by all means, use it as, as a starting point, and I would argue that it's, it probably is founded on as much evidence as anything that's out there, um, but the evidence that, uh, that's out there is built on very uh, soft foundations. So um, use it, um, take it away, but you know, I, I certainly wouldn't be swearing that these numbers would prove to be the most accurate numbers in the world. 
But then again, we'll probably never know the exact numbers, certainly when you're talking about the 40 years. Um, but there are ways to find out uh, more detailed data on the number of children that are out there today, and certainly that's something I think that could be looked at.